Hello everyone, this is Gleb. Last month I posted this Cypress pagination challenge. You have a table on the page and there are several pages in this table. It doesn't show all the results right away. And you can click on the page number or you can click on the next button. And I posted an initial code that you can see right here in my Cypress pagination challenge repo. And if we look at the spec, we are visiting the public index.html file. And then we have to find the next button and keep clicking it until we arrive to the last page in the table. The button becomes disabled and then we can confirm that we are on the last page by checking if the next button is disabled and the last button is disabled. So the challenge is to implement this test correctly. You have to do something almost approaching like while the button is not disabled. Keep clicking on it. There are lots of solutions. In this video, I want to show plain Cypress syntax solution using recursion. Let me move code editor to the right. In my terminal, I'm going to open Cypress. We're going to use end-to-end -end testing. Electron browser is fine. Let's move it to the left and click on the spec. So this is our page. And right now it fails because we're not actually doing anything. But if we keep clicking on this next, we should stop right here. All right. So imagine you just want to click once. So you're on the first page. You want to find the next button and you want to click. Can you do that? So I will say click. Okay, so we went to the second page, but the button is not disabled yet. So in this case, we want to get the status of the attribute of the button. So let's get this button. And because we don't want to click if a button is already disabled, we have to check the attribute first. So imagine you have a button, so I get yields you a jQuery object. So if jQuery object attribute disabled is disabled, then at a transition event, then we can say last page, for example. Else, well, now we want to click. And we can do it in two ways. We can wrap the button and click, or we can just query it again and click. And just for the purpose of the test to make it clear, I'm going to wait, let's say one second right here. Now, this is fine for the first page, right? Notice it actually moved to the second one. Well, on the second, page, you have to do the same thing. You have to get the button, check if it's disabled or not. And if it's not disabled, click it again. So we have to repeat the same code block. And every time you want to repeat the same code block, it's a recursive algorithm. So let's say function maybe click next, because we don't know if we're going to click it or if we're already on the last page and we should not click it again. And because I don't like this utility functions kind of being inside the test, let's move it outside. All right. And we can call this function just to get it started right here. So we went to the second page. That's fine. Well, now we have to call the function every time we click it. So we can do it just saying after you click, then call that function. Okay, so get the button, click on it, and then call the function recursively. So let's see if it works. Second, third, fourth, fifth page. And now it says last page and we confirm we have disabled next button and disabled last button. Perfect. So this is plain Cypress implementation of this function. We can simplify this a little bit. We can refactor, for example, we don't have to use jQuery to get the attribute 
In the code we can get the button and invoke the jQuery method utter disabled right away, which is equivalent to this code. And when we get this disabled status inside, so if that's attribute disabled is equal to disabled, then we want to stop. Just kind of make it clear from the command log what is happening. So speaking of a command log, right now notice we're iterating multiple times and it's unclear how many times we actually iterated and all these intermediate calls are kind of annoying. So let's clean it up. We can disable the log using an options. Okay. So for example, we can disable it in wait and here and even inside click, we just have to remove the comma. So now the only ones that we see are invoking the attribute because you're invoking a method and you don't know how many arguments it can or method needs the options go in the first argument. Okay, so in this case, we are not outputting anything until we are on the last page. And it's kind of not nice because we don't see what we're doing. So what I would like to do, I would like to say we are on a page and then give the page number. So this number can come from the argument. Well, right now it's always one, right? That's what we start. Okay, page. One second. Okay, so notice it's page one, right? And the problem is right here. It gets the default argument, which is the subject. So in this case, we have to call it explicitly and pass page plus one. And now our log is pretty clean, page one, page two, page three, and so on. And when we get to the last page, like we see right here, and we are indeed on the last page. Okay, so this is plain Cypress solution. In the next videos and blog post updates, I will show a probably better solution, more elegant and more concise using various plugins that I have written like Cypress Recurse, Cypress Await, and Cypress If.